Hey folks, Jimmy here, AK Palette of Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop me a comment down below. I love hearing about from you guys, it goes a massive way to helping out the channel too. Now, this week, we are on issue 64 of Stormbringer magazine, and we get another named hero. We get one vote for our good old Gloomspike Gits. We get Scragrot the Loon King. So, a pretty cool, highly detailed mini from the Gloomspike Gits range. Scragrot is a mage and he's pretty nifty. And yeah, he's got quite a bit of detail to him. So, this mini is a pretty good one and obviously it's going to take a bit of painting and getting used to. There's a lot of little details on him because Gloom Spike gets a lot pretty little. And really, really fun though. I must admit, I am looking forward to painting this one. Uh, it'll be really good fun. So yeah, happy days. Moving into this week's issue though. First off, we are met by Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork. So... Gobsprack is the most infamous of all Swamp Caller Shamans. He is the greatest prophet of the Auric kind and speaks directly for Mork. Or so he claims. Those who question him are often found dead with their lungs full of swamp water, so even the more sceptical Aurochs are slow to voice their doubts on the matter, or at least within earshot. As a devotee of Mork, Gobsprack values sly cunning over sheer brutality and he uses the visions granted to him by his divine patron to guide the Oryx on a holy war against civilization. So, obviously, Gobsprack is a named hero. He's pretty cool. Obviously, you can tell from that picture. He sits astride a big, massive vulture and, yeah, looks pretty ace. So, it's a really, really cool mini. Um, genuinely, it is a proper, proper centerpiece style mini as well. Um, and we might talk about centerpiece minis at a later point in time. But it's pretty damn ace. It's a really, really good kit. Um, I genuinely would buy one of these uh, if Oryx were my thing. So, if you're going to go for Oryx and you want a heavy Cruel Boys influenced Oryx, uh, by all means, buy Gosprack. Really, really cool stuff. Obviously, he is the mouth of Mork, so Gork and Morka is the god of the Oryx, or rather, the gods of the Oryx, for he is essentially two beings. His personality is made up of two aspects, which rarely get along with one another. One of these is Gork, who is brutal but cunning, and the other is Mork, who is cunning but brutal. So they kind of complement each other, but they don't get on. Uh, Obviously, he is a magic gubbins as well, so he is a wizard and a great sorcerer, so he does utilise a lot of sorcerer's techniques and has a lot of trinkets relating to sorcerers. And then, obviously, the future, future know-whats. So, Gobsprat claims to be granted prophetic visions by Mork. What surprises many Oryx is that this actually seems to be the case. True. And he's seemingly able to predict the ebb and flow of battle frequently using this knowledge to lead his forces to the victory. So, a bit of interesting information about that Swamp Caller Shaman. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you're an Auric player, definitely worth picking up at some point. Moving on though, we get more about history about the realms, and this one obviously being about the realm of fire. So, at the dawn of the Age of Sigmar, the Stormcast Eternals ventured forth from Azir to retake the mortal realms from the powers of chaos. Akshi was the site of the first conflict as the Hammers of Sigmar descended from the heavens to face Korgos Kul, a mighty Lord of Khorne and his blood crazed hordes. So, when the newly forged warriors of the Stormcast Eternals left us here, their mission was to retake the realm gates that connected the mortal realms and purge the lands of the evil that had befallen them. The Hammers of Sigmar, led by Vandas Hammerhell and landed in Akshi at the start of the campaign, and there they drew the attention of Korgus Kool, whose bloodlust drove him to challenge for Stormcast. So, if you go back, the first edition of the Age of Sigma was Stormcast Eternals versus the Forces of Khorne, and 
you know, some of the models look a little bit dated now, and in all honesty, some of the models have been discontinued. Good old GW for you. Um, for instance, a lot of the Stormcaster tunnels have been discontinued from that first set, and they are now going to be uh, kind of going into the Warhammer Legends section when the new edition comes out. And yeah, in 12 months' time, they won't be legal in any battles. But anyway, it is what it is. So you can always use them in your kind of non-competitive games. Then moving on, obviously, we have more information about Hammerhal Akshi. So if you don't know already, Hammerhal, the city of Hammerhal is a city that splits across two realms. So there's Hammerhal Akshi and Hammerhal Gyron. So the realm gate splits in between the two and travel between the two is quite common. So it's a bit interesting. And then you get a bit more about the Dawnbringer Crusades. So Dawnbringer Crusades are very, very linked to the fact that this is called Stormbringer. So the Dawnbringer Crusades are the what were introduced with the third edition of good old Age of Sigmar, and they have evolved into tightly regulated military operations with participants carefully selected and exhaustively trained, but it wasn't always suit. So the first kind of Dawnbringer Crusades that set out across the parched plains of Akshi were composed of whoever could be bribed, persuaded, or pressed into joining. So they would get surrounded by Guard of Free Guild and Stormcast Eternals, and yeah, now they have more of a Free Guild contingency. They still get protected by the Stormcast Eternals, but they are more kind of organized and ready to go. If you want to know about Stormbringer Crusade, well, one of the Dawnbringer Crusades, should I say, uh, the Dominion novel is worth worth it. Um, I have it, and pretty decent read. It's a pretty good book. So, yeah, and you get a bit of information because it's all about one of the Dawnbringer Crusades. Then we get our page for Scragrot the Loom King. So Scragrot is the self-proclaimed king of the Gloom Spike Git. He is the master of madness induced, inducing magic of grot kind and a cunning commander he leads vast hordes of grots trogoffs and other subterranean monsters across the land to grow his kingdom and chase the bad moon so scragrot a pretty nifty character he's a bit interesting he also appears in the world that was as well so pretty cool and yeah definitely a good one so you get obviously to do his usual like the tactics and stuff like that and great deeds and epic deeds and such like and that's how you can kind of go through it if you want to with him you don't have to though then obviously you get your how to build guide it's relatively straightforward some parts are fairly small so do be careful with them try not to break them because some fragile parts on there but he will look pretty pretty epic once you are done with him uh, personally before we go on to the painting side if you are going to want to get a really really good paint job i personally would actually paint him off the base before you paint before anything so you can get into all the little nooks and crannies and stuff like that if you really want to go for a really really strong kind of highly painted look but it is always up to you of course moving on though the paint guide fairly straightforward if you are painting following the guide it's genuinely a decent guide there will be a few little things that i would change personally but it's pretty decent when you've kind of completed him he's going to look pretty deep pretty good um yeah there's just a few things that i personally would change and probably paint differently but once it's done you know you're gonna have something like that it looks a little bit desaturated uh, i think it's mostly because of those reds it needs a brighter red behind it to kind of get it really really shiny especially on them squigs they need some really really good kind of brighter colour so squig orange is a really really good colour and kind of brings an oranginess to them um, or you can go Mephiston red and stuff like that and you get a really nice kind of brighter more vibrant red at your squigs but it's up to you then obviously we have our war scroll so obviously he does have a pretty good bit so he has a two inch range three attacks uh, six wounds six bravery uh, and can move five inches at a time because he's only little Pretty damn cool stuff, and he is a wizard as well. So he does have some uh, tutorials to do with things like Fangs of a Bad Moon and the Moon on a Stick, and even his uh, entreaty as well. So pretty cool stuff. 
Moving on though, obviously we get our battle plan as well for this week. So you get your scout report on the first page, and then you get your battle plan itself. So obviously using four battle mats for this game. And you get to do the usual, pick your three heroes and prick, pick your five troops. If you're going for the Alliance of Destruction, it does want you to take Scrag Rot as one of your heroes. So two heroes, five troops. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. It looks pretty good. It works quite nicely. So... You know, have a bit of fun with it, enjoy the battle, and uh, yeah, obviously, you know, going after them objectives, which is always really good fun. And then on the last page, you get to do your tracking and all that type of stuff if you wanted to, so pretty good. Moving on, though, next week it is uh, Guardian Idol time, so you know, it's not a new reality TV show, it is literally a Guardian Idol statue, which is part of your scenery range. It's pretty decent. It's up to you how you want it, if you want to bother with it or not. But it does add a little bit to your game. And then we also get paint in the issue after that. So 66 is Squig Orange, which very, very handy for Squigs. And Wild Rider Red, also pretty good for Squigs. So you do get some Squiggy colours, which is very, very handy, in all honesty. So pretty good stuff. Before we go, though, there is a little bit of news that you may want to know for good old Warhammer. So if you are a regular Warhammer fan, if you want to know more about the good old Next Edition and you want to get your first glimpses of it, um, 16th of May, we're going to find out more. Well, 16th or 17th, depending on where in the world you are. If you're in the UK, 17th of May, 1am, we will find out more about the good old new edition so it's a week away um yeah very very early in the morning i, I won't be up for that i'll be because of work uh but you know pretty good stuff if you're in the us uh it's 8 p.m 8 edt 2 a.m cst 10 a.m aest because it's all being done at the dallas open the other news is the disappointing news so if you do buy Warhammer directly from GW, prices are going up. Now, it's not yet doom and gloom. It's going up between 3 and 5%. So, on each kit. It's a little bit annoying, but these things happen. It, to be honest, GW do this every 12 months. Uh, they will increase their prices, which is a bit crappy. But if you want to get your minis and you want to save money shop around you do not have to buy directly from gw you can buy from third party retailers say go to goblin gaming get an account with them go to leodis games go whaling games element games whoever you want they all generally do a discount on minis so it's worth shopping around save yourself some cash some of them do loyalty schemes as well and their loyalty schemes will give you a bit more back later on and you know you can save more money so why wouldn't you you know when they're putting theirs up by three percent you can be saving 15 to 20 percent through buying a through a third party retailer so shop around spend that way plus supporting independent retailers does really really help them guys out so it's definitely worth it anywho that is more than enough from me Thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you sometime soon. Bye bye now.